This is Munich's number one fighter, Alex Popek. How are you, sir? Hi, guys. I'm very good today. Thank you. No, of course, dude. Uh, I've heard so much and I've seen your fights and I've been so excited to get to speak to you. Uh, this is a bit of a cultural crossover, isn't it? Where This is a Pakistani uh, MMA podcast <laughs> and we have Munich's number one fighter who is right now hot off his win over Francisco de Souza at Agrell in 29. And of course, an impressive showing, utilized dominant positions, outpowered Francisco and just finished him in convincing fashion. Uh, Alex, I've been so excited to get to speak to you. First off, how does it feel uh, to get back in the winning ways after uh, your fight at Agrell? Yeah, first of all, thank you for your kind words. I really appreciate that. And uh, of course, a win is always good. and. Um, after competing on the contender series, Dana White contender series, um, I had to win, so I get, uh, give all my energy in the camp, and I wanted to win so badly. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, the the fans could see that. So yeah, no, for sure. And you know, the contender series is, um, you know, like one of the world's best testing grounds right now for fighters all over the world, right? Um, how is that process like? I mean, how is it like for you to first be approached by the UFC? I mean, clearly they're showing some kind of interest in you right now. Get into uh, so, uh, you know some other indicators that I've noticed. Uh, but what was it like competing on the series and getting reached out by the UFC? And how was that entire process like? Yeah, so um, the manager approached me so that the UFC is interested. And of course, this is a huge honor, and um, I think every fighter wants to compete on this level at, mm -hmm. at the UFC. And um, yeah, amazing, amazing. So we, we visited the, the facilities, PI, UFC Performance Institute, and uh, we did all the videos and photos there. We did some training there. So it's the, the most amazing uh, combat facility I've seen in my life, uh -huh. yeah. And uh, then um, for the actual fight, I mean, it's a fight is a fight, so yeah. not not too much of a difference. But um, the only difference is that there at the contender series, we we didn't have uh, a lot of fans, so this is a, a almost empty arena. Just the UFC stuff is there, and the coaches. So yeah, but it's a it's a real uh, testing ground. Yeah, mm. yeah, no, for sure. And the contender series, like I, we've seen a lot of uh, you know uh, great people come through the contender series. Of course, like one of the uh, original starting OGs of the contender series was Sugar Sean O'Malley. Look at where he is now. You know what I mean? He's doing excellent in the UFC. Uh, but you've been fighting guys, and this is why I've been so excited to speak to you, Alex, because you've been fighting guys who are essentially. And completely top level, right? So Rob Wilkinson, for example, is one guy who got into the UFC. You fought him. And after your fight with Rob Wilkinson, he went on to face uh, the current champion at uh, middleweight, who was Israel Adesanya. And then, of course, Dusko Todorovic is another guy that you got to fight. And he also got a contender series fight right after fighting you. It's almost as if the UFC is keeping too close a watch at you, Alex. It's like they're looking at all of your opponents. And I swear, like, it's, uh, you know, all three of your losses are against people who have gone on to some level of UFC competition. Does that make you feel in some way or the other, like, comfortable about where you are right now exactly and how things are working out for you? So yeah, that's absolutely right. What you're saying that uh, all guys I've lost to, they are currently in the UFC or uh, fought in the UFC, and all are, are good high-level guys. And um, I know that I am now. I am at that level. You know, yeah, yeah. Uh, just some I, I had bad luck or bad fights against uh, these guys. Like I'm honest, uh, against Rob Wilkinson at that time, I wasn't. Um, at this stage so this was one step too too far for me and uh yeah but now i i know i i know i am very very close to this level or i am at that level i i believe that um even now i could beat some of the guys in the ufc at uh, 93 kilos mm. Mm. a light heavyweight right yeah that's right yeah, Alex, I've noticed you've, like, I've, I've watched your old fights. Now you've put on a lot of weight. Like, you've you've really bulked up. 
uh, and you know you look like a completely different fighter in your last fight you know what i mean and and that's just a testament i guess to how well you've kind of uh, put on that muscle uh, and kind of moved into light heavyweight how do you feel about uh, the ufc's light heavyweight division because that's one of the weirder division in the ufc right now you know what i mean like you have a very dominant champion then you have some good contenders uh, then there is you know a lot of guys in there who you know one hungry german can easily you know what i mean just just eat him up how do you feel about the ufc light heavyweight division right now yeah so for the last couple of years um they had a lot of old guys like shogun who uh, mashida whatever and since about two or three years i feel like um new guys are coming in like alexander rakic for example from austria guys like that like young upcoming hungry guys and you see like they they fight like three or four times and they are at the top top level like top 10 level you know mm -hmm. yeah. so yeah for sure also for me when i when i make it to the ufc i think i i can get into the contendership um really fast mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, for sure. And, you know, like uh, like I said, the light heavy division is always very interesting. Uh, and like you said, you've been displaying learning curves, right? Um, every single loss that you've had, do you feel as if you've learned something? Uh, and do you feel like it's better for fighters to kind of get into, you know, the hot waters and kind of test themselves a little early? Or are, are you glad that you got to be tested this much this early? Or, you know, like, uh, how, how do you feel about, you know, your career as you're moving towards the next direction now yeah definitely i'm glad about the experience um all, every fight is an experience but i think um it doesn't make sense to to get a win record of like 15 and 0 with yeah. uh, only fighting like yeah. bumps you know <laughs> like yeah. easy competition yeah. because then when you are at the top level maybe you will have uh, you will experience trouble in inside the fight which you never did before so i think it's better to test yourself before and have some um, hard things on your way but if you fight through it uh, you can still make it and then you already had those experiences and um, mm -hmm. yeah you are more grown and mature and a better fighter uh, when you step in there yeah no for sure and you know like uh, every single fight that i've seen a few like these like you said it's easy to get like a 20 and 0 record uh fighting bums you know what i mean but every single guy you fought is legit those fights have been tough and of course like every single victory you've had has been like you know hard fought so i mean it's just a testament to the kind of uh level of competition that you're facing uh do you feel as if the ufc because the ufc operates very interestingly like as a guy sitting in pakistan you can imagine you know like we've never had the ufc even remotely close to us uh but you know just sitting from here we you know like if i try to look at how they operate they often look at fighters from different nationalities often when they see that there is a lot of interest off mma within the country that they're representing right or if they bring the ufc back home to wherever the fighter is from that the fighter can pull enough of an audience or do you feel as if germany is at a point right now where the ufc can look at a lot of german prospects uh and say that yeah you know what we gotta invest in germany yeah definitely so i think um when the ufc will be back to germany i can be one of those candidates to compete in in the ufc for sure and um even without come uh, the ufc coming to germany I just need uh, maybe a couple more wins, good wins, and then I will go there for sure. Yeah. yeah. And um, yes. what I wanted to add is uh, what you said before. Even uh, after I lost to those high-level guys, I never fought a guy like zero and two after. You know, a lot of guys doing that. But, for example, after I lost to Rob Wilkinson, I fought a guy with seven and two, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, and uh, after I lost to Dusko, I fought a guy on Titan FC with 19 and 9. So yeah. <laughs> I never, you know, I never fight a guy with 0, 5, whatever, just to to get a win. Because uh, I think you need to test yourself. Of course, make smart decisions, but test yourself and you grow in the process. 
No, for sure. And very well said. I mean, there's been, of course, like a lot of guys who've come in, uh, you know, hype train, so to speak. Uh, you know, people who come in and almost undefeated, unscathed, untested sometimes. Um, you know, people who are trying to figure out what their weaknesses and what their strengths are. Um, and I feel as if it, it might just be a better approach to kind of understand your weaknesses and strengths yourself and kind of be an honest fighter about how you're approaching the game. Uh, do you feel as if uh, now that you're very, very comfortable at your weight, uh, which again, you mentioned uh, 93 kilos, a light heavyweight division, uh, and you've kind of set a target for yourself for the ultimate fighting championship. Uh, what do you think is needed for you to get to the next step right now in order for you to finally uh, get a firm foot? Yes, yeah, so now US. we all have to get over this situation with the gym closed and stuff. So currently I'm just training as much as I can and work on stuff uh, what I what I can do and uh, then of course I'm looking to fight again I need to I need to win I, I need to get one two three wins I don't know like yeah. God knows uh, and and my manager needs yeah. to do some good work and <laughs> then uh, we can we can get in there no, your manager's great, man. Rizvan is uh, one of the best guys I've got a chance to work with, so you're in good hands. Uh, I can guarantee you that. Uh, and, you know, there's always been, obviously been other German fighters uh, in the UFC, like Dennis Siever, uh, Siever and uh, Peter Sobata, uh, and, of course, Nasrat Hakprast and uh, Pascal Kraus. Uh, one of them, of course, is uh, Daniel Weichel, who was a Bellator contender, uh, and he used to fight out of Frankfurt, Germany. And I saw an interview between him and Luke Thomas, uh, this was way back. I'm, not, I'm pretty sure Luke Thomas doesn't even remember this interview exists. But he asks uh, Daniel Weichel as to, you know, what the current state of German MMA is. And Daniel Weichel back then said um, that there isn't a TV deal, but it's growing slowly and steadily. Coming from a country myself, which is, of course, uh, plagued with the problem of not getting to promote combat sports at the highest level. Uh, what do you think the state of German MMA is right now and what would you say about it? Do you want to give us an update uh, from Danny Weichel's, uh, you know, uh, testimony? Yeah, so now the current state is um, that the MMA community here is growing and growing. Even in Munich, more and more gyms are opening up, even if it's just kickboxing or jiu-jitsu. But um, also MMA and in Germany in general, um, now we have a couple of really professional gyms, like you mentioned, Peter Soboda's gym or Daniel Weichel, he trains in uh, Frankfurt. They have a, a great gym there. So, yeah, we are, we are getting uh, better. And, um, of course, not yet the level of the United States, for example. But, um, yeah, it, it's definitely on a higher level than a couple of years ago. Yeah, no, for sure. And, you know, like the thing is, even like here in Pakistan, I noticed um, that it all takes time. Like I asked one of the guys who started MMA in Pakistan some odd 15 years ago. Um, his name is Bashir Ahmad. He's a guy who's fought in one championship uh, and, you know, all other uh, big promotions. And I asked him, you know, what is it going to take for Pakistani MMA to grow? Uh, hoping that he would give me some kind of a, you know, recipe or an answer, just sprinkle it on me. Uh, and instead, he just says, brother, it's just going to take time, you know, and I guess that's that's very true because stuff does take time, especially sports to grow. Um, and of course, like when you have uh, fighters like yourself, I guess one thing that would help MMA grow in Germany even more is Alexander Popek as UFC light heavyweight champion of the world, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely, for sure, 100%. <laughs> <laughs> how do you feel a light heavyweight like what's different compared to how you were maybe uh at middleweight or or you know previously like what what do you feel as if is the advantage that you bring to light heavyweight are you packing because i saw you pack quite a punch against uh, uh you know francisco de souza but how are you feeling at light heavyweight um right now i feel much better because i don't um cut so much weight so <laughs> as i used to when i fought in uh, middleweight and also what I think is um, I have a very good athleticism. So I move very fast and uh, my punches and my, my kicks, et cetera, are very fast compared to most light heavyweights. So I am a explosive fighter and I, I can use that. Um, even like some of the guys in light heavyweight are probably like heavier or, or maybe stronger than me, but mm. I'm faster and more, mm. more explosive. And uh, with 
not cutting as much weight, I definitely feel better in uh, conditioning wise and healthy, you know, and I want to be healthy when I step into that uh, cage. Yeah. yeah. And you know, a lot of fighters do decide to cut weight and keep that advantage. How do you feel about that? Like, of course, it's all, you know, like if it's under the rules and if you put yourself through whatever you put yourself through in order to make a lighter weight and then rehydrate and make a higher weight and then have an advantage, you know what I mean? Like, um, how do you feel about that entire process? Because, you know, I, I tried explaining weight cutting to a layman, you know, somebody who isn't a part of the sport and they wouldn't understand. They're like, what do you mean you dehydrate yourself two days before the fight completely and then rehydrate yourself one day before the fight? How do you feel about, you know, uh, guys cutting down and then, uh, kind of rehydrating and getting back up on weight. So, I mean, as long as you do it in a safe manner with, with a guy who has a new, uh, degree in nutrition or something who did that like a couple of times, 50 times, 100 times, and he can support you during the process or he, he can write you a program or something so that you can do it in a safe and healthy manner then of course you can go for it but uh, i would say never like i think that the the rule is never go above uh, 10 percent of your body weight so let's say you're 90 kilo you don't want to cut more than nine kilo so this should be the maximum this is a general uh, rule and um i think you can gain an advantage by cutting weight so size wise and strange wise but when we look at the ufc now even last weekend like this weekend we see the fight or i see the fights mostly mostly stand up so 80 90 percent only stand up striking because the guys nowadays they know how to get up or defend the takedown so um in striking size doesn't matter too much yeah mm. i feel mm. it matters mm. like Connor even says pre pre precision, yeah. speed, you know, accuracy yeah. Yeah. more yeah. Than, yeah. than power. And um, in, in grappling, wrestling, it's different. If you have more weight, it, it's an advantage for sure. It always uh, depends on your fighting style. Like mm -hmm. some people, they need to cut so much weight to impose their style on, on their opponent, you know. So yeah. I think there is no general rule like do that or do this so everyone has to find uh, the, their way yeah and you know like uh you're completely right like i i noticed everybody this weekend like there are amazing fights by the way ufc 249 holy shit what a card i really had a i enjoyed that card so much man wow that was amazing and again like you said most people were standing up we saw a point in between within the ufc but in in between the divisions where we would see guys would want to actually try to clinch or grapple you know what i mean and that was becoming the norm now everybody's realized ho hold up like there is the cold because and the Kamaru Usmans and the whoever else, you know, the huggers, so to speak, as people call them. And they're just going to kind of hold on to me, so I have to understand how to get out of it. So, yeah, I mean, the sport's constantly evolving as well. And I actually want to segue that into your fighting style. Um, what is exactly, how would you describe your fighting style to somebody who's not uh, very, of, uh, you know, or aware of how you fight? I would describe myself as a mixed fighting style. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It always the De depends on the opponent so uh, i try to go there where my opponent is w or weaker than me so if i have a, a guy who is more grappling based i try to fight in the striking if i have a guy who is uh, weaker than me on the ground or if is a very good striker i try to take him down so that was uh, GSP's approach as well. He always took the striker down and uh, strike with the grappler. So yeah. That, yeah. that's my approach. No, I think that's a very good approach. And uh, I think also like uh, now, do you feel as if um, it is kind of important for every fighter to know every aspect of the game because there might have been a time where you can kind of get away with, you know, being a one trick pony, so to speak. But I feel as if the sport has evolved and keeps evolving every year where people keep learning new dimensions of the game where they haven't seen before. Like I haven't seen anyone, for example, get 
uh, clinched up and dominated the same way Tyrone Woodley did against Kamaru Usman when he lost the title, right? That was the first time I was like, whoa, like I've seen this before, but I've never seen anybody implement it so, you know, perfectly. And this is that's a championship fight. Everybody's watching that, right, all over the world. And they say, either we're trying that or we're making sure that never happens to us. Do you feel as if everybody needs to know every part of the game now? Yeah, for sure. I really, I, I think that, that, that you need uh, to know and train everything. Like the example you, you brought up is the same with the calf kick. Mm-hmm. I don't know who started it, but nowadays all, so everyone is using them. Yeah. Because yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a good weapon. Yeah. yeah. Have, you ever, you, have you ever taken a calf kick to the, to the knee? Did I, if I, if I took one? Yeah. Uh, not in the fight. All right. Uh, I, I was just gonna ask you how it feels, but I don't think I want to know. <laughs> that stuff looks nasty, bro. <laughs> it looks really bad. But Alex, I mean, I'm really curious. How did you get into martial arts? Like, what was the thing that wanted made you want to kind of get into MMA and start training and start competing? Yeah, so it was um, like that. That we visited Thailand with my family for holiday, and uh, mm-hmm. at that time I was maybe 17 or, or 18. Uh, so ten about ten years ago, and um, we were rough kids. So me and my brother, we always fight <laughs> each <laughs> other. And um, then uh, in Thailand, we we went to one uh, Muay Thai show, mm-hmm. and yeah, we we sit down in the first uh, row directly at the ring, and we get excited and adrenaline <laughs> rushing through <laughs> the body and. Then I said, yeah, I want to do that. I want to try that. And um, then coming back home, I started uh, with Thai boxing. So Muay Thai first. Mm-hmm. And it, at the same school, we had uh, Jiu-Jitsu. So I, I, then I did um, Thai boxing and Jiu-Jitsu. But at that time, only Gi Jiu-Jitsu. But because in Munich, at that time, we didn't really have MMA. The people yeah. saw it. it's only striking and uh, grappling. But mm-hmm. at that time, Gi Jiu-Jitsu was coming up because a lot of Brazilians came to, to Munich. But things that evolved over time and I traveled to, another, to, to different countries like Thailand again, trained at mm-hmm. Tiger or Phuket Top Team, whatever. Mm-hmm. And I always picked up different things from, from everywhere. And so I brought this, this stuff back to Munich as well. And people... They, they learned by watching UFC or, yeah, yeah. you know, things evolved over time. Like you said, even in general, the sport is growing and so did the training and the techniques. Yeah, but that's how I, I got into it. That's, that's fascinating because, um, you know, Thailand and the Philippines and um, Malay, like these, these are countries right now that are like hotbeds for like you said, Muay Thai and striking and a lot of these things that are, you know, like one championship and the like the almost I wouldn't call it the Eastern Hemisphere, but I guess we'll call it the Eastern Hemisphere uh, in the Middle East. And all these there's a lot of MMA promotions that are starting to spring up. And I think a lot of people underestimate just how good um, these Muay Thai guys are, especially over at, you know, places like you mentioned, like Phuket Top Team and uh, Team Fairtex. And, you know, these guys are producing world champions. It's pretty crazy. Uh, you know, like, yeah. And, and I think it's fascinating that you got in through uh, Muay Thai. Uh, but now, like, now that you've kind of incorporated every aspect of the game, uh, would you still want to maybe visit uh, Phuket Top Team to kind of brush up on some skills or one thing or the other or, you know? Yeah, of course. Uh, actually, I just uh, was there in, in March. Oh, really? Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Awesome. Training, <laughs> training at the uh, top team. But I was focusing more on the MMA. They have a great MMA coaching staff there and great fighters. I was training with uh, the one cha- – he was champion before at one championship, uh, Vitali Biktas. Right, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, right. He was a middleweight or, or light heavyweight champion mm-hmm. at uh, one mm-hmm. before a Russian guy, and I was training with him. Like so, always great guys there in in Thailand for for some good training. Right. Yeah, and now like even guys like uh, you'll see like uh, guys like Eddie Alvarez also training out uh, 
in Asia here and there. You know, they just prop up in one hour gym. Um, I'm going to let you go, Alex, but I'm going to ask you one last question, brother. Uh, I keep asking this question to a lot of the Pakistani guys who I talk to here. And I keep asking them, like, you know, the fact that there isn't a Pakistani champion in a major promotion just yet, you know, does that add an extra bit of motivation for them to want to be the first Pakistani guy to become a champion in a major organization? And now I'll put the same question on you. I did my research, or at least I tried. I couldn't find any German fighters who were, you know, champions in major promotions. Does that put an extra bit of, like, focus in your head that I want to be that guy? 100%. Definitely, I think so, yeah. Because you want to, if you are the first, you are the first, you know, it, it adds extra motivation for sure, 100%. Yeah, and hopefully one day we will see it. The UFC light heavyweight champion of the world, Alex Popek, just has a ring to it, my friend, just has a ring to it. And I really hope you get it, man. I really hope you get it. And I really appreciate you doing this, Alex. Honestly, thank you so much, buddy. Thank you so much. I appreciate the time. Have a nice day. Thank you so much. Of course, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been a very interesting, a very fun episode uh, with my friend from overseas, Mr. Alex Popik. If you want to check out Alex on Instagram, the link is in the description below. If you are watching this and you happen to be in Munich, you can get really good uh, top grade UFC level personal training from one of the best or sorry, not one of, pardon me, the best, the number one in Munich, Mr. Alex Popik himself. Make sure you go check it out. And from me, as always, there's three things I got to say to you. Subscribe to that channel or Alex is going to come kick your ass. Number two, go like us on Instagram or Alex is going to come kick your ass. And number three, give us a subscribe on YouTube or Alex is going to come kick your ass. And as always, keep it tight. Boom.